Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I set up my bullet journal for May. This month I'm going to be using a bunch of pretty watercolor pieces of koi for a koi pond inspired theme. So let's get started. A few weeks ago I did a tutorial on how to watercolor these koi, so I'm going to be using some of these pieces. And I've also gone ahead and painted a few more to choose from. So if you missed that video, go ahead and watch that first so that you can get a bunch of pieces painted that we can collage together for this month's bullet journal. In addition to the three fish that I painted in that video, I also have a bunch of other ones that I painted and I did these all on separate pieces of watercolor paper that I'm going to cut out and paste into my journal. I like to do it this way because then I don't have to worry about messing up and I also get to play around with lots of different patterns and colors for the koi so that you can just pick and choose your favorites. You also won't have to worry about your pages buckling or tearing when you add water to them if your pages are a little bit on the thinner side. I'm also going to be collaging, so I pulled out some blue tissue paper, some old book pages, letter stickers, and also star stickers. I'm starting off with this first watercolor koi that I painted using Tombow dual brush pens that you can see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out of this sheet, and I'm just going to leave a really thin border around it when I cut it out. This is just so that you don't have to stress about cutting up right against the edge of your painting. But I also like leaving that white border because then when you collage this piece, it gives it a nice highlighted frame to stand out against any backgrounds, especially if they're a little busier. I'm starting off by ripping off some of that blue tissue paper and also my book page and I'm just trying to create a layout that looks nice with the orientation that my fish is. Depending on how you painted yours, it might be facing a different way so you might want to build out your collage on a different corner of your page or if your fish are smaller, maybe you want to use two instead of one. It's totally up to you and it's based on what you painted. I also brought in some of my vellum to layer as well. You can also use tracing paper or wax paper, parchment paper, just anything that's kind of see-through. I like building up these see-through layers because it gives it almost like a water-like feel because you can kind of see through to the next layer. And it's also nice to use thinner materials like this so that you don't build up too much bulk in your notebook when you're layering a whole bunch of layers. So I'm just using double-sided tape to tape down all of these pieces together and I'm going to attach that into my notebook. I'm also creating a little collaged element on the top left corner of my page just to balance out the colors and the layout a little bit better. After I'm done collaging and trimming off all of the excess pieces, I'm going to finish off the page by using my letter stickers to spell out May for the cover page and also scattering around some of these star stickers as well. It's nice to use little stickers like this if you have them because since tissue paper and vellum are a little bit see-through, you can kind of see those areas where I use double-sided tape, so I just try to position my stars so that they might hide some of those glue and tape spots just to make it a little bit of a cleaner look. Moving on to the monthly calendar page, I'm starting off with an outline for the month as usual, just using my black fine liner. And I'm also using a couple shades of teal to fill in some of those areas and add a little bit of this ocean color. Then I'm bringing in my Inktense paint pan and I'm going to be just doing a light watercolor wash around the edges of my paper. I just wanted it to have a little bit of color and to look a little bit like water. And I do have to add a lot of water to get this kind of wash effect. So I'm really glad that this notebook holds up really well to watercolor. This is the Scribbles That Matter journal. And then I'm just going to do some lettering for the title in that empty space at the top left. And I'm using my dual brush pens for this. And then I'm going to take my brush and add a little bit of water to it to kind of blur out the edges. I kind of want to make it look like it's underwater or like it's gotten wet and got a little bit blurry. I just think it'll be a fun little effect to go along with this water theme. For this page, I have a koi fish that I actually experimented with painting on vellum, which is sort of like a translucent clear material. It gives a really cool effect because you can kind of see through it. It looks more like it's underwater, which I think is really cool. I'm just gluing this into the corner of my page here and you can see how you can still see that blue watercolor wash through the fish, which is a really cool effect. And this is all I had planned for the page, but it looked a little bit empty, so I'm going to fill in a couple of water lily pads around the page just to fill it out and to make it look more like a koi pond or a lake. And the water lily pads are really easy to draw. You basically just have to draw like a Pac-Man shape or like a piece of pie with one slice cut out. Very easy to do. And then I'm just going to color these in with different shades of green, just doing a flat single color for each lily pad and not going too crazy with the shading. 
I'm just gonna keep adding until I feel like it's filled out enough to make the page look finished. And that's it for that page. Moving on to the first weekly layout, I'm going to have a really large decorative piece on the left side of that page. So I'm leaving that completely blank and filling in most of the boxes on the right page by making some longer rectangle shapes. And I'm going to be creating another collaged area on the left there. So I'm bringing in my blue tissue paper, some book pages, and another koi fish that I watercolored on vellum. I'm just creating another collage layout here and then I'm going to be gluing my vellum fish on to give this page a focal point. I'm finishing off the page with a little bit of washi tape and finishing off the headers for my boxes for the days of the week. And that's it for that page. For my second layout, I'm going to be running this collage element along the top of both pages. And I'm using the koi fish that I showed you in the tutorial that uses my Inktense paint. This one has more of like a muted kind of look to it, which I think is really pretty. And I'm just filling in my collaged area by adding a little bit of washi tape on the left corner of that page. I really liked this black washi tape because I think that Having that hit of black really adds some contrast and makes the page pop a little more by giving it a little bit of darkness. Here my cat decided to join me and I didn't have the heart to make her go away because she has a cone on right now and she's very sad. So she's just gonna be crafting with us for just a little bit here. Hopefully she doesn't get too much in the way. I'm just finishing off the page by adding that koi fish to the collaged area and then just doing some simple columns for the days of the week. Whenever I'm doing skinnier columns like this, I like to just divide them with a single line instead of boxing out the entire day because I feel like that takes away too much usable space since the columns are already so skinny, if that makes sense. And the left side of this collage looked a little empty, so I just quickly drew in a couple of little fishies to look like they're swimming into the water. Just a cute little element that I thought would add a little something extra. Next I have this painting of Koi that I did with my Inktense paints and they're kind of like intertwined in this circle piece and I thought it would be really cool to work in a circle element into my journal because I don't think I've ever done that before so I think it would just be nice to try something different. I just ran some of my black watercolor along the edges just to give it a little bit of a border and to give it some definition against the rest of my white page. And I cut my piece in half so that I can put this in the middle of my spread and taped that down. And then I'm just gonna draw these lines going off from the center, sort of in like a radial effect and box off different sections for the days of the week. This is definitely a very different layout from what I've done, but I think it turned out really cool. And, and I think it's an interesting way to section off your days of the week. And I'm just filling in those headers with black and then writing over it with white gel pen. Again, I really like working in black contrast when I can, just cause I think it makes a page pop a little bit more. For my final weekly layout, I'm going with one of my favorite simplest layouts. You basically just do a bunch of rectangle boxes all over both sides of the page. I like to split my last one into two for two different sections, but you can keep it as just one if you want to. And then I'm going to be drawing all around the outsides of these boxes so that it looks like they're kind of floating on a background. And I'm going with another water lily koi pond sort of background. So I did a light blue wash over most of the area and I drew in a bunch of water lily pad shapes. And again, I'm going to be painting those in with different shades of green just to give it different variations in color. I'm adding those headers with my teal pen and that is it, super simple and easy. So here is the final flip through of May's setup. This setup actually came together really easy because I had most of my pieces pre-painted already and this is just a great time to practice your watercolor since a lot of us are home. So make sure you checked out my tutorial for how to do that if you missed it. Then you can practice a whole bunch of pieces, cut them out and bring them together for a really pretty bullet journal layout. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye!